What is up, Bruins fans? Today I'm bringing you a clip from episode 358 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast as hosts Sam Smith and Dom Tiano discuss the upcoming 2024 NHL draft for the Boston Bruins. Now, yes. and, and the big thing is, you know, next year the, when they go virtual, this will be the, the last one where everybody's under the same roof, yeah. so to speak. Um, and... You know, this this uh, in a way has to do with the draft, but not till next year. <laughs> For those that don't know or hadn't heard today, I got the whole press release up on my website if you guys want to go read it. But today the Canadian Hockey League and USA Hockey came to a three-year agreement where the top prospects games will now be between uh, the Canadian Hockey League and the National Team Development Program. Oh, wow. So it'll be a two-game series uh, where you have the best of the CHL versus the National Team Development Program in the top prospects game, as opposed to the CHL having their own and then uh, USA Hockey having their own. So it's that a three-year is- three year agreement. Uh, that starts next season. That's a that's awesome. That's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah, I hope that's. I'm hope I'm able to watch that somewhere, maybe on like the NHL Network or something. It'll like it'll definitely be on NHL Network. Yeah, it would have definitely. to be. I would want to watch that just to see how that would go. Yeah, just so, so you can kind of study up on prospects for the future drafts and stuff. When they when they were first talking about it, I didn't like the idea because um, <clears throat> you were eliminating you know, 20 potential CHL, CHL players and 20 potential, potential USHL players. But now that they're making it a two-game series, you can replace those players. So you're basically having two teams each. That's going to be, that's going to be a yeah. hell of a lot. Of fun. <laughs> um, so with the draft, the Bruins are Bruins now have four picks in the in this year's draft because of the Olmark trade. Um, the Bruins have a first round pick drafting a number twenty five. They have a fourth round pick at one twenty two, a fifth at one fifty four, and a sixth at one eighty six. Um, where do so? Let's start with the first round pick. Where do you think the Bruins could attack? Do you think <laughs> they, we were talking last week about this being a defensive heavy draft class? Do you think they'll try to attack defensemen for the most part? Or could they expand into forwards or goalies? It could expand into, into forwards. I'm not going to touch a goalie in the first round. The thing is, is when you're looking at probably 18 to 30, maybe 35 you can bounce those players just around just about anywhere. There are good players. Um, <clears throat> here's the thing. And for you people in the United States, don't get mad at me. Um, I won't take any offense. You know, um, <clears throat> I'm a firm believer that you have to be cyclical in the draft. You can't always draft from the CHL. You can't always draft from the USHL uh, because you have to stagger when your players are coming, becoming professional. So here's the thing. With that 25th pick, if I'm the Boston Bruins, knowing what my prospect pool is like, if I'm drafting somebody out of the USHL, or drafting somebody out of Europe, I better be damn sure that they're ready to turn pro in two years. Not four years, not five years. If you're drafting a guy with another year of USHL eligibility, he could be potentially five years away. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you better be damn sure he's turning pro in two years. Otherwise... I'm grabbing a CHL kid who I know is going to turn pro in two years. Like Matthew Patra. Exactly. I think that's a perfect comparison. Um, Mark sent in his picks in the chat, so we'll pull them up here for you. 
He says that he would draft uh, in the fourth round. He didn't have a first round pick. He said in the first, in the fourth round, he has Jonathan Morello or Luke Ashton. Um, fifth round, he says Caden Shahan or William McIsaac. In the sixth round, he would go Eric Paulson, Jack Bodine, or Cam Hendrickson. Yeah, I mean, I read Mark's uh, thing this morning or this afternoon at some point today. Um, I've got my list coming out tomorrow. I list five players at each spot except the first round pick. I went with two. Um, and I went by my own list. I didn't go what the pub public lists are saying. This is how I viewed the guys. That's the only way I'm going to be able to give my honest opinion on, on them. Um, like Mark, I got a couple of goalies on there because I think they need to to get one. Um, especially after letting Reed Dick walk. Um, we'll talk about that later in the show. Yeah. So um, the, the, the thing about this draft, like, like I said, when you're 18 to 35, you can go any number of ways. You can go 15 different ways. But beyond that, it's it's a coin flip. Like I for for pick one twenty two, um, I got a Swedish defenseman in there who I've seen on some of the public lists ranked in the second round. I just don't think he's a second round player. Um, I think he falls to the fourth. That's where I have him. So that's what I'm saying this draft is like. It, it It's like it's all over the place. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> you you um, compare you compare something like red line to, I don't want to say elite prospects because uh, I, I don't compare anything to elite prospects because as far as I'm concerned, it's a bunch of garbage. Um, why do you rank 500 players in a, in a 200 player draft? Like, you know, but you, you compare red line to let's say um, hockey prospects or, or McKean's and look at them side by side. And you might have one ranking a guy second round, another one's got him fourth round, another one's got him seventh round. Right. It's like all over the place. It's kind of like this. It's like... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked your thoughts on uh, Dean Letourno. Um, I don't think he'll be there. Uh, that's, that's my thoughts. Uh, so I don't even consider him. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I, I just, I hope, do, actually, I have a question for you. Do you think the Bruins could flip this 25th overall pick and try to get higher into the draft? They could, or they could sw flip it for, uh, an NHL ready player. I, I would put nothing past on Sweeney. Yeah, no, I wouldn't put, I wouldn't <laughs> put past him. Yeah, I, he won't get into the top 10. I don't think with this pick alone, he'd have to throw in like another pick. Oh, he he'd be throwing in next year's first as well. Yeah, to even come close to the top ten, and that well, might it, get him close. It wouldn't get him into it. Yeah, it, it, the highest I could see them trading up to is maybe in anywhere from eleven to fifteen if they were lucky. Mm, I think even eleventh out of reach. Like to move up that high, you're throwing in Mason Lorai. Oh yeah, so maybe like fifteen through eighteen or nineteen. Yeah, I you know they're they're not getting into the top ten without a significant <laughs> ad. Yeah, uh, Bear Force asks, "What about what about uh, Saka uh, Boy there at twenty five? I uh, again, um, like the player. Uh, I think he's probably in the twenty to twenty two range in the draft." Um, one of my viewers comes in and asks his thoughts on Andrew, um, Basha or Ryder Richie, if they are still available with that 25th pick. 
right, let's make it easy. Here's the two guys that I have at 25. Um, Cole Baldwin of the Barry Colts of the Ontario Hockey League. He's number one. He plays all three positions. Um, almost an elite playmaker. Has energy to burn. He just goes nonstop, constantly. Um, uh, solid defensively. Um, kills penalties. Can play the half wall, the bumper, or in the shooter's position on the power play. Um, and he blocks more shots than most defensemen in a game. So, um, and he's got leadership qualities. So, um, there's, there's the guy that I would hope to get. The Bruins like that type of player because he's got size at 6'2". Uh, the only knock on, you, you'll read, I swear you're going to read that he's a slow skater, and he's not. He beats defensemen one-on-one -on -one wide, like, He's got a very unusual skating stance, and that's the issue with the skating. But don't believe those that say he's slow. He He's just the Bruins-type player that he plays with energy, he plays with pace. He's a playmaker, type of guy that would fit in very well with David Pasternak. Um, and, and he plays all three forward positions. Absolutely. Um, Jeff <laughs> says the 25th tr pick has trade value, right, though, right? It's already been used to acquire Bertuzzi, to bring it, and now Allmark. Why not trade for a winger or LD or a left defenseman in a package with the pick? Sure, it, it has value. And, and Jeff, I'm, I, what I'm saying is that don't be surprised if Sweeney does trade him, trade it in a package. <laughs> for an NHL ready player. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see what happens on, uh, on Friday night. Cause that's when the draft will begin. Um, it should be very interesting to be the last in-person draft in the NHL draft era, because they're going to be going all virtual starting in 2025. What are your thoughts on that? The fact that the draft will be going virtual. Hate it. Hate yeah, it. Me too. Me too. Uh, you know some of the the some of the players' biggest memories are at the draft. You know when they're hearing their name called out, and yeah. uh, and um, you know gone will be the days where Eric Lindros gets drafted and refuses to put on the jersey, or Mario Lemieux, or you know. Um, you know, seeing David Pasternak excited, hearing his name called out finally in the 25 spot, uh, yeah. things like that. They're, though, all we're going to have is memories. And th those memories are being taken away from future players. So I don't like it. No, me neither. It's kind of ironic that Pasternak was drafted at 25 and we have a 25th, 25th pick this year, 10 years later. It's kind of yeah. ironic. Yeah. It's funny. I read somebody, I don't know if it was on Twitter or a chat room or something. Um, um, and I, I, I found it quite comical where somebody <laughs> said, uh, maybe Sweeney should ask David Pasternak who to pick in the 25 spot. Well, he must know something about that, right? Since he turned out to be. Yeah. yeah. The player he is now, maybe maybe Pasternak's, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe Pasternak knows something we don't. Um, so, of course, tune into the draft this weekend. Uh, the Bruins have a lot of stuff to do with the draft. They have four picks. Um, don't be surprised if there's movement um, is what we're kind of getting out of this. Don't be surprised if there's any sort of movement out of this draft. But, again, if they use if they decide to take all four picks, it also wouldn't surprise me either. No. No, nothing. You should never be surprised by anything that Sweeney does. You might be surprised in what he gets back in return in the trade, but don't be surprised that he's making a trade. Mm -hmm.
Like what you saw? Be sure to come back on Wednesday for episode 359 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast as hosts Sam Smith, Dom Tiano, and Mark Allred will recap Bruins free agency and the 2024 NHL Draft. See you then.